Hey guys, it's Michael and welcome to Box Mining. I found that maybe making this video with a different angle helps because for the better half of this week, I've been trying to figure out how to talk about the current situation that's developing with the decentralized finance scene. DeFi has been popping up and the hype on this has reached beyond, I would say beyond insane levels. And it's very hard to talk about it without being very cautious of what's going forward. But at the same time, I feel very conflicted because whilst the hype is insane, the implications of what the DeFi space is building and what is going to go in the long run, I think it's way under hype for what it is, to be honest, because it's targeting one of the biggest fat cats in the industry. It's targeting the centralized banking industry. Simply said, if you look at a pie chart of the global financial system, You'll find out most of these things, instruments, derivatives, markets, operators, banks, and intermediaries, central banks, international financial institutions, sovereign wealth, I mean, even payment settlement and clearing and custodial systems. <laughs> A large portion of that can be directly replaced with what is decentralized. It can cut out those middlemen, those central banks with their expensive licenses, their monopolies on this current financial scene and immediately remove that and gain the benefits of a more open, decentralized, and transparent market. And this is why I feel like this is one of the best scenes and most ex where I've seen the most amount of excitement and I am personally most excited about. But at the same time, of course, the whole scene with decentralized finance coins has exploded to a level that has only been seen in the 2017 ICO space. And we all kind of know how that turned out. In the space of a month, we've stopped talking about percentage gains on Bitcoin, like 10% gains. That's nothing. No one really cares about that. We're talking about X's now, 10X, 20X, 100X on your investments. And that's popping up on multiple chat groups, channels, etc. It's just total insanity. The number of people reading white papers, if you want to talk about any projects in detail, that's barely anyone. Right now, most people just care about getting into a cryptocurrency, making sure that the project locks up enough of the circulating supply via staking pools, and then go ham. And on top of that, we have the craziness, which is DeFi yield farming, which while it makes sense from the start in terms of a lending platform, the incentives on that with rewards potentially going up from 30 to 200 percent annual percentage yield, none of that is really sustainable in any form or the other. And something also quite scary, and something I also find quite scary about the decentralized finance space is that a lot of times the speculation is based on governance tokens. Sure, governance tokens allow you to vote on where a particular project can go, but there's no real guarantee that this will give you some form of return from profits of this project. And if you want to look at the full insanity of it, check out the story on July the 14th with the BZRX swap. Essentially, what happened was that this project was listing out a new cryptocurrency on Uniswap. And what happened was that these bots or you can call them hackers or people who are manipulating the system, they managed to clog up Ethereum network so much so that regular users can't get access, can't buy in on this ICO. And essentially, they managed to buy up the entire supply, swoop in on the entire supply and make multiples of returns for selling that supply on the market. That's insane. And this has now forced projects like MTA, so I've been looking up this over the weekend as well, to essentially offer a auction style. And, and it's a very haphazardly built up system as well. So this is the order book for the MTA USD. So this is where the auction is going to take place and people can place their bids in the form of buy orders. And eventually, when the time is up, the team is going to send 25 million MTA to this order book and fill it. So essentially, people who are trying to buy this are waiting to be dumped on by the team. 
I mean, if you just put it in that perspective, it sounds so crazy. Because back in the day, we'll be so afraid of the team dumping tokens. And now, you know, we're just waiting. We're like, oh, dump your coins on us. Dump your coins on us, please. That's how insane the whole situation is right now. So obviously, with this insanity, I'm very concerned about how this is going forward. I think it's extremely crypto to take something that has a lot of potential and to dial it up to not just 100%, but to 20,000%, way over what is rationally good. So have we learned anything from 2017? I think community and greed and emotion-wise, nope, none of that. And in many senses, this is why I'm making this video to make sure that we set the tone or on the understanding for this. And in many senses, I think it's kind of almost common knowledge at this point that this is not sustainable and this will not end well. There will be a time when just like musical chairs, everyone's dancing, but when everyone needs to sit down, people are going to panic and not everyone's going to be left with a chair. Some people might end up losing 90% or plus of their value, just like what happened in 2017. Now, this might be deemed as fun. So someone might say, oh man, box mining just flooding the entire DeFi space. What are you doing? Why are you even here? Just get out. Just wait, get out. But actually, knowing this, I think, I think the best analogy for my mentality going forward here is that it's very similar to, say, the dot-com boom. I think most people investing at that time would have knowledge that the dot-com boom was too crazy. I mean, pets.com was getting these insane valuations on little more than a website and very little business. But at the same time, I feel like I don't want to miss out. I mean, if I, I was given the opportunity, I was a little bit too young back then to be part of the dot-com boom and the dot-com era. I mean, it's life-changing. Everything right now we use is online. I mean, in fact, you're seeing this video online and it's completely changed the world as it is. And I see the exact same thing with decentralized finance. Would I want to miss out on this? Hell no. Hell no. Of course not. There's no reason at all to miss out on whatever is going on here. And this way you need to be strategic and rational and following your own strategy here. It's something that we've been saying a lot on this channel because at the end of the day, it's all your own decision and uh, no one can really guide you here. I think there's no set guideline that will guarantee profit. Anyone saying that is definitely a scammer. Well, for me personally, not financial advice, of course, I've delegated a small part of my trading fund to go into DeFi projects and to investigate what's going on. I've been spending <laughs> numerous hours at night looking at what is developing, what's new, and what can be used. And honestly, what can be used already is astonishing. Just take for a simple fact something simple like Uniswap with an automated market-making engine. It's very, very quickly replacing centralized exchanges as the default launchpad of choice for new projects. And centralized exchanges have already responded. They drastically lowered their costs for listing new projects on their platform, and they've already felt the heat already. So I definitely see this going on, not just with centralized exchanges in crypto, but more importantly, with the whole centralized finance system as a whole. HSBC, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase, these, these guys better watch out. What we can do in decentralized finance can replace 80 to 90% of their entire business, their billion dollar business. I mean, if you just look at it today, we have what Compound with a huge ass lending, we have Balancer with automated market making and liquidity pool, same with Uniswap, with TrustSwap providing huge amounts of time payments and ability to swap coins from different chains around the world. And this is just the beginning. And on top of this, with oracles like Chainlink coming in, smart contracts are only get, going to get smarter. They're going to get real information like who wins an election, who owns property. I mean, what can we do tomorrow? What can we do in the next five years in this space? I'm just astonished. I think there is like absolutely no doubt in my mind that I want to do more research. It's just, it's actually encouraging uh, for me. And that's just saying the least. So how, how do we end this video then in that case? And my conclusion here is that there's definitely should be a warning given out to how much hype there is. It's way beyond hyped at this current point. And 
that's not always going to end well. And in fact, we saw with 2017, it did not end well for some projects. And that is my mentality. That's the risk I assume going into the space. Am I staying far away? Am I just going to hide in a corner and say, this is all a scam. Oh my God. I think that is both foolish and stupid. It's almost like Peter Schiff saying Bitcoin is going to go to zero. It's not. It hasn't. And in fact, you've been pretty plain wrong, buddy. So at this point, point, I feel like I'm going into DeFi knowing the risks. And I think that's the core here. You must know what you're getting yourself into. There is a lot of hype. There's also no real way of calculating what a governance token should be, especially if the governance aspects of the criteria and what they can do can change over time. I'm pretty willing to know that and go into it. And I think that's the current state of thought I'm in. And I've adjusted my allocations of how much I invest my portfolio allocation for that. And this is something that everyone must, not financial advice, must do them yourself personally. You must understand the risk and there might be even more risks than that. So <laughs> go research that. So that's my take from it. I'm definitely not going to hide in a corner and uh, try to say everything's a scam. I think um, that's too much Peter Schiff for me. And uh, going forward, I'm very eager to explore the space. I've been researching pretty much an hour a night and an hour in the morning. And we also have a whole list on decentralized finance, which I'm going to be very fast to add more and more projects to. So make sure you keep in touch and check out what's happening there. And lastly, of course, we have a giveaway these few weeks. So every week I'm going to give away an item. This week it is the treasure. So to take part of this giveaway, all you have to do is click the subscribe button down below click this notification bell. And then when new videos do come up, type the hashtag notification squad in the comments and you'll have a chance to win one of these. So make sure you do that. We've already given away a ledger. So keep in touch. We'll do the draw on next Monday and I can hope you can catch me on that stream. I'll put that stream information right over here. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below what you think about the DeFi space, what you are looking into. And I'll love to hear and do more research about that for you. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next episode.